This would be going back into your into. I just can't get over how much grossness is in this that they're sending right back into your engine. Look at that. Hey, what's up guys? I'm Dan H and welcome to the project. In this video, I'm gonna show you guys exactly why I believe every vehicle should have an oil catch can. So to start this thing off, we're gonna take a look at the catch can I installed in my 2010 Jeep Commander with the 5.7 Hemi exactly one year ago today. So we're gonna crack this thing open. We're gonna see what's inside of it. Oh yeah. All right guys, here is the catch can I installed in my 5.7 Hemi one year ago. It comes out of the PCV valve, then it goes into the catch can collecting all the blow by, then it goes back in to the intake. So here we go. This is my last oil change worth. And this is the year 2020's catching. So that's uh, quite a significant amount of uh, blow by. All this nasty oil and gunk would be in your intake and gumming up your valves. And I think it would be destroying your engine. So look at this stuff. This is just pure nastiness. This would be going back into your intake. I just can't get over how much grossness is in this that they're sending right back into your engine. Look at that. Debris and yuck. Now, I'm not even going to drip all of this into it. I am just going to clean this off, install this back in my commander, and then we will measure this amount. Let's test it out, and we'll see how much oil was caught, how much blow-by was caught, in one year's time. Now, this is just about 10,000 miles. I'm just going to prop this up, and then we'll talk for a minute. So, here we go. Here's the catch can once again. I installed in a Hemi. This was actually... Oh, man. I suck. <laughs> We'll just rest that up there. That should do it. All right, again, this is a catch can I installed in my 5.7 Hemi in the Jeep Commander. It was originally for a Dodge Ram, but I retrofitted it to fit in here on my Jeep. If you wanna see the video, you could check out that little link and uh, you can see how I installed that in my Jeep. So, all right, let's talk a little bit about blow-by. So combustion gases blow by the piston rings in the cylinder and what happens is or what happens was back in the old days it would just escape through seals leak onto the ground and leak out into the atmosphere uh, this is best illustrated to me in the world war one fighter pilots they'd have that white silk scarf wrapped around their neck why because oil would seep out of the engine get blown back onto their face and goggles so they'd use the scarf to wipe the goggles so they could see and fly the plane So oil seepage was quite common back then, and during the 60s, the uh, government decided that it wasn't healthy to have all of this oil seeping and leaking out all over the place, so they decided to seal up everything and make a PCV valve, positive crankcase ventilation valve, and this is a one-way valve that would let all the gases carrying oil droplets and everything that blew by the piston rings to get sent into the intake and get burned up and it would clean up the smog problem. The problem is that all that stuff, that smog causing stuff, would go back into your intake and it gums things up. So that's why we have to have a catch can. It catches all of this nastiness, all of this stuff that blows onto the pilot's face and gums up your intake and your valve. This stuff is now caught, dang it, I did it again. This stuff is now caught and it is removed from the engine. So we will see, you know what, I'm done with this. We got uh, we got just about eight ounces. Can you see that? Yeah, there we go. This is eight ounces of nasty, yucky oil, blow by, caught by my catch can. So there you have it guys, eight ounces and 10,000 miles. And here's a fun fact, guys. The modern PCV system was originally designed for tank engines to allow them to operate underwater during missions in World War II. Pretty cool, guys. 
All right, guys, considering the catch can in my commander, it cost about $120, but it did catch about 8 ounces of blow-by oil in one year's time. And also considering the fact that this 4.7 V8 in my WJ, it just smells like it's burning oil. Well, you guessed it. We're going to do a catch can in this bad boy, and we're going to install a new PCV valve. So what we have here is a brand new Mopar PCV valve. I got it from the dealership. It costs about $12. So that's going in, and we got a standard Amazon basic no-name brand aluminum billet catch can. This costs about $25. So we're going to see how much oil this catch can can catch in, uh, in one year's time. I'll give you an update next year, but uh, let's go ahead and open this thing up. We'll see what's inside. All right, so we'll take a look at this PCV valve real quick. It is Mopar number 5303-2800AA. It's for a 4.7 V8 in my WJ. And here we go. Here is the Amazon catch can. Again, this is a $25 no-name brand Chinese special. <laughs> Let's see. This, this is actually really nice quality. It's comparable to the one I have in the Commander. There we go. It's got a dipstick. It's got its filtration. And it's got a nice solid uh, bracket to mount things to. So that's cool. There we go. This is our dipstick. That's cool. The other one doesn't have a dipstick. I don't think I really need a dipstick. I'm just going to change this catch can out every oil change so uh, we got a inlet valve labeled here and an outlet labeled here this has got the material to catch the sediment and the debris I think this is stainless steel stuff and of course we have our fittings uh let's see this i guess it did not come with hoses so i guess they forgot to include them shame on them but uh I guess we'll have to pick some up at the auto parts store. So in the meantime, I'll find a place to put this thing. All right, guys. After staring at this engine bay for quite some time, I have no idea where I'm going to fit this catch can. There is not a lot of real estate in here and nothing really good to mount this to. What I think I'm going to do is I think I'm going to zip tie this little clip right to the neck of this radiator cap. Just drop it down in there. But first, I'm going to just nick off this corner with the little cutoff wheel and make some room. This way, I could have the inlet of this come right off the PCV valve, go right in here, and then we'll exit the catch can and go right back up to where it's supposed to be. So let me just uh, get my tools. I'll cut this off real quick. All right, we'll drop this right in here and we'll zip tie it right here. All right, now that we know where our catch can is going, we're gonna install our PCV valve and this little guy, this is how you know it's good. It's got a little check valve in there. That's supposed to wiggle around with no problem. And we're gonna put that right over here. This is where it goes. So, let's just uh, unplug this one. Yep. <laughs> well, well, good thing we're changing it because it just snapped right off. Oh, man, that's brittle. All right. Uh, let's keep going with this. I'll remove it entirely. Oh, man, look at this. Well, that broke off, too. Ah, just old and brittle. What are you gonna do? That's well, a good thing we're addressing this now. <laughs> Crumbles right off. Oh, there we go. Well, all right, here is the broken chunk of the PCV valve. It's kind of hard to see, so I brought you in close. And this is what it's supposed to look like. And it's got this little tab down there at the bottom. So we're gonna see if we could just rotate this little guy out and if i get in here let's see i'll rotate it back and then pull it out that yeah, there we go easy peasy here is the new and the old compared side by side this has got some weight to it and you can feel it's gummed up so 
I'm glad we're changing it out. This is going to be garbage in a little bit. And this one is going to go right in here. There we go. Clicks in. And let's rotate it gently. I don't want to break this one off. Plastic, you know. There we go. Push it in and rotate it. All right. So PCV valve is here. It exits this way. So we're going to have to route a 180 degree turn to get to this catch can. And then the exit will go out of the catch can right back to this hose. So we'll go to the auto parts store and get something to work this thing out. Hey guys, check this out. I really like this part about the catch can. So it's got all these different size fittings that you could screw into your catch can to match perfectly with the diameter size hoses you need for your PCV valve. So check this out. My PCV valve is right there. It's a 9 16 So we're gonna have a 9 16 inlet into the catch can. And the outlet diameter is, let's see, we go back into the vehicle. That's a uh, one half. So right here, we're going to use a one half inch hose to get from the output of this back into the vehicle. So that's the size hoses I need to buy. We're going to do a nine sixteenths and a one half. So that's easy, guys. That's all I got to get at the store. All right, let's go. I gotta be there for a while. <laughs> All right, I'm back. I got some hose. Now that's 7 16 hose, and this is 5 8 hose. It's the closest match I could find. But it's a little bigger, but it's okay because they invented hose clamps, so we won't have to worry about that. Uh, got a couple elbows to make a little uh, 180 degree coming out of the PCV valve. So that should be cool, and let's see, what is this? More hose clamps. All right, let's plumb this up. All right. I'm gonna use the included, come on, the, <laughs> the included Teflon tape. Let's see, how does this go on? Screws in this way, all right. So we will wrap it in the direction that it threads in so it doesn't unwind the Teflon tape. There we go. Just do a couple passes, that should be good. And this is the big side, again we measured, so that's gonna be the inlet, right out of the PCV valve. Going in. And here we go. We're gonna do the outlet. This is the smaller line that we measured. Couple passes there, very good. Thread this on the outlet. And we're gonna crank these down nice and tight. They are a, what is this, a 20, no, uh, 19 millimeter. Okay, nice, robust 19 millimeter. All right, that's tight, not going anywhere. Okay, onto a rather important part of the catch can. So take out that dipstick. Right now, we are going to take a look at the baffles. Just gonna open this bad boy up, take a look inside. Now here is our input. The hot vapor goes out of the PCV valve and it goes into the catch can. It goes down through this little, looks like a little pepper shaker. What? This is the baffle. Now the baffle is what the catch can experts say can make or break a catch can. Now right now we just have these little openings, but sometimes you need a little extra so we're gonna take our mesh, I'm just gonna cut a chunk of mesh off. There we go. It's metal, so it's not ripping. <laughs> gonna... Ow, my finger. I'm gonna take this, <laughs> come on. I'm gonna take a little bit of this mesh, we're gonna lay it right in here. Now this gives the catch can something to condense onto. Now that's what you want, so the Vapor can cool a little bit on that mesh and then drip down the baffle into this can and then the clean air could escape out the output. So there we go. Now the difference between the good cans and the bad cans, 
<laughs> the cheap cans like this one and the good cans like the one on the commander is the one in the commander has a built-in one piece baffle and filter but this we're kind of just guessing on and um, it's actually kind of cool because you can customize it to the conditions you're using it in um, if you're in the winter you want this thing closer to the engine so this doesn't freeze because now that you're condensing all this liquid it's going to have water droplets on here and that might freeze and you don't want this to freeze up so make sure this is warm in the winter actually you might just want to disconnect it in the winter if you're in a place that has sub freezing temperatures yeah that would be a good idea to do that you don't want to freeze up your your pcv system so there we go got this back together we got our baffle in <laughs> Put in the little dipstick. So now that we've added our steel wool, hopefully we could get this cheap $25 catch can to operate like that expensive UPR catch can. All right, onto the hoses. All right, so I got my elbows, I got my hose. I've got hose. I'm gonna make a quick 180 out of this PCV valve and bring it over here to the catch can area. All right, guys, this is what I came up with. This is where the blow by is gonna come out of the PCV valve. It's gonna come in through here. It's gonna make a 180 degree turn with my two 90 degree elbows. I cut off some of the barbs on each side so I could get this uh, a closer turn. Then it's gonna come down here right to where the catch can is gonna go. All right, gonna connect this to the PCV valve. Let's see if I can run this under here. There we go. All these hoses are in the way, <laughs> but it's all right. And slide that right on, that's perfect. There we go, come on baby. And now I'm gonna connect the line that goes back into the engine. Let's just work this over this tube, here we go. It's a little cold, it's brittle, you wanna be careful. Do not wanna break anything. Oh, there we go, guys. Out of the PCV valve, bang a 180, come down through here, and then it's gonna go back in through here. So now all we gotta do is plug in our catch can. So the catch can is going in this general vicinity, and I'm gonna trim up these lines, and I wanna make sure I leave enough slack so I could maneuver this thing up and out of the way when I wanna get to the reservoir to empty it out. And I'm going to want to make sure if I need to get inside any of this, I could always easily detach it. So, uh, yeah, right about here is good. I'll make my cuts right in this area. And, yeah, this gives me plenty of room to work with. Cool. All right. This is it. No turning back. This is it. No turning back. Alrighty, slide on our hose clamps. Slide on the catch can. I'm going to use some extra hose and I'm gonna give myself a nice hose buffer. This way this metal is not rubbing up against anything. Wrap that on there. Cool. And now we'll put on the zip ties. There we go. Two zip ties, nice and tight. Got our catch can mounted. <laughs> pretty cool, pretty cool. I'm happy with that. And we will snip the excess. Perfect. Whoa, buddy Buck, I'll tell you what. The sun went down and it is freezing out here. Had to run inside and Jimmy Jam my D&E Christmas sweater on. So now that I layer it up, I'm nice and warm. And we can check this out, the final product. Here we go. We got our catch can. It's plumbed up next to our new, can't really see it, a new PCV valve. And that's all right. It's coming over right here, right next to the radiator cap. And uh, it does not interfere, so that is excellent. You can still take this on and off. 
And when we want to empty our catch can, all we gotta do is snip those little zip ties. We can empty it out, put it right back in place, connect it with some new zip ties. No big deal. So I'm gonna run this thing and see how it is with the engine on. <laughs> One good thing about having an exhaust manifold leak is you don't have to leave the engine bay to sample the exhaust. No, I'm not getting any hints of oil. <laughs> not bad. All right, guys, that is a wrap for this catch can install. I can't wait to see how well this one does. We know the Commander catch can caught eight ounces last year. That's almost an ounce every thousand miles. So anything that this can can do has got to be better than just letting that blow by, destroy all your valves, and gum everything up. So can't wait to see how well this one does. I'm going to save all the catchings, and I'll report back to you when I can. If you guys want to get a catch can just like this, $25 Amazon special, can't beat it. I'll leave a link in the description below. Could be a great Christmas gift for a friend, family, or even your own WJ or whatever you have. So if you guys have catch cans in your vehicles, let me know what you got. Let me know how much catchings you save. And if you have a WJ and have a catch can, let me know where you installed it. Maybe I'll move this thing if I get a good tip from you guys. So that's going to be it. Um, remember to like, remember to subscribe. I will catch you guys on the next project. Merry Christmas and Happy New Year. Peace. Heather, we have some exciting news though. If you notice, I'm not currently wearing an ugly sweater. Mine is very stylish. But we do have an ugly sweater contest here and uh, we have an envelope. Uh, we had some judges uh, prior to today's service and we do have some uh, awards for ugly, uglier and ugliest. Yeah. So uh, at this time, um, I guess they would call it the third runner-up. Is that the proper? Okay, third runner-up. I would like to invite the entire Hartman family to the front. If we could just give a round of applause for the, the ugly, the ugly award. The whole family, you got to see this. And, and we, Neil, if we could just get a zoom in. I don't know here because we have to see... Uh, this is a, this is, yeah, let's just, let's, 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 let's encourage them on up here. If they need a moment. There's, there's a bunch of them here. So I'm going to, I'm going to give this award. Yeah. Just right here in the front on the, on the trap door. Um, don't, don't, here you go. Look, that's, that's for you guys. That's your award. Yeah. Turn around. Look at the family at home. Please look at, just come on. Give them a round of applause right there. All right. In case you're watching at home, this is the way. All right, thank you, Hartman family. Fantastic. Now we're going to go on to our second.